off topic for sure, and it comes from a body of work that my friend and I have been sharing on a local soulful aging tour, local readings in our community, and at the Little River Poetry Festival, where they started. And I'm reading it because it's my um, most recent poem. So I always think you like your last poems. You're into it, you know? <laughs> but I haven't read it in a while, so I'm not sure what's even in it. It's called, well, my husband ca calls it my opus, but I call it the self-portrait, eulogy and self-portrait. She liked tunnels, but not bridges. Rooms rather than open floor plans. Documentaries more than biopics, and gingerbread more than brownies. She teared up when she saw Andrew Wyeth's art in a DC museum, and listened to every song that Mark Knopfler ever recorded. She said, I always feel more prepared when I have a toy in my pocketbook. And whenever I say I don't know what it is I'm doing, and it borders on wasting my time, I call it research. <laughs> she liked to people watch and thrift shop. She marched for peace and cherished children. She said, as far as I can determine, I'm a Jungian Taoist, a Stoic who might have been a transcendentalist if I lived in the time of Emerson or Thoreau. She wasn't a leader or a follower, but a party of one, she said. I'm a fiscally conservative independent who votes Democrat because they represent my views on civil rights, women's rights, labor rights, and the environment better than their counterpart. Her Irish ear for words took root in childhood. With nursery rhymes, fairy tales, and jump rope songs, and she knew she was meant to be a poet after hearing Leonard Cohen sing Suzanne. The sun was her psychedelic of choice, the ocean her love language. Her childhood heroes were Annie Oakley and Peter Pan. A camera was the first thing she bought after getting paid for her first job at a daycare. And as she got older, she said, I'm writing poetry that lets the soul guide the itinerary because the days are small, packed tightly together, not much room for last minute changes. Bird watcher, shell collector, tea drinker, food grower. She was a long hauler before there was a name for it. Her friend Luke said she danced like a pollinating bee going for nectar. She was a beach town girl who went back to the land to live in a cabin and keep a flock of chickens. Being mother to her two sons was the highlight of her life. Marrying her husband Joe, the reward. Her parents and siblings were the song of her heart, her grandchildren, the charmed encore. She liked to quote Eknop Aswaran about choosing only one meditation mantra. If you dig shallow wells in many places, you will never go deep enough to find water. And that applies to life, she said. In her poetry book, Packing a Suitcase for the Afterlife, she wrote, in lieu of death, send the living flowers. Make your life payable to all those you love. <laughs>